Welcome to the Lessons for Living television program. My name is Bill Santos. Thank you so much for watching. We have uh, Dr. Barry Bussey back with us this week to discuss the intersection of religion and individual rights and the law. Dr. Bussey, thank you so much for coming back. And uh, to be here. we uh, always appreciate when you come on. And I think it would be an understatement to say since you were last here, things have changed slightly <laughs> in, the, in yeah, the world, sure. in our country, yeah. and, and specifically in our province. And uh, was really looking forward to the opportunity of having you with us. And if you could just share with us some of the things that I know this is the work that you do. You know, you're on top of this. You accompany this. You, 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 you advise charitable organizations, churches. You know, what are some of the things you see happening that um, will impact us as church members, I mean, clergy, and just regular Canadians? And so basically, I just want to give the, yeah. hand the ball over to you and just <laughs> well, you, okay. you share well, with us thanks, what, what you're it's, seeing. And, yeah, yeah. It, well, it's, first of all, it's great to be on your program Thank you. again. And uh, uh, you're doing such uh, great work and inspiring a lot of people across the country. And you know, Bill, the thing is, we have seen so much uh, with respect to, for example, the COVID environment that we're in. I think um, many of our, many of your viewers would uh, remember the words of Scripture in Romans 13, uh, where the Apostle Paul says, let every soul be subject to the governing authorities. And, mm -hmm. and he gets a whole list there, you know, and, and uh, you know, do what is good because these people are being set up and um, they're interested in, in, in the public good, right? Um, we generally have that presumption and, do, that's, yes. and that's something that uh, is extremely important, especially living in a liberal democracy. Um, and when COVID uh, came about, uh, when the lockdowns started coming and the, the shutdowns and all the rest back in March of uh, 2020, um, you know, it was for the temporary, right? right? It was going to be a couple of weeks. Yeah, and then like it, income tax yeah. was temporary. <laughs> well, <laughs> it, it, at least I don't think it's going to be like income tax. I like, I mean, not. hopefully we're, we're coming now on to the end of this whole yeah. thing. But, but and so I, I think there was a lot of goodwill there. There was a lot of no sense, doubt. you know, there was a lot of sense of, you know, uh, first of all, government didn't even know what exactly. they were dealing with, right? I mean, this Fair enough. Uh, and the, and the numbers that were coming out of the experts as to the fatality rate and all that kind of thing was like, wow, you know, this is a this is a, a very serious um, situation that our country, in fact, the world, is going to find yes. itself in. And so, um, you know, government authorities uh, had to rely upon their public health uh, professionals and and try to to mitigate uh, all that was happening. And, um, but as time has gone on then, um, and we got to know more about the virus and how it affects people and all the rest of it, it, um, it became then an issue of, okay, well, so what's what? And, right. um, and people started asking questions. And, and, and then I think uh, one of the, the real struggles has been um, from my observation is the fact that people have been asking questions and that you can't even, uh, the, the official narrative is, well, no, you don't even ask the question, yes. right? And so that then becomes um, some tension points. Right. And, and we've, we've seen that as, the, as we've come through, and we've come through, what is it, we're now coming through the third wave, and some are saying now, well, there's a, a Delta variant that's out there, and then that's going to be even worse. And so there's always this sense of fear and... Then there's, um, you know, just, uh, you know, there, there's a whole bunch of other discussions going on about, well, okay, well, what about, uh, do we really need the vaccine? Should we have not been having other treatment uh, done? And so all these questions, everything was boiling. It's like a cauldron. And, um, um, 
And then as we, as we carry on, I, I just look at, uh, for example, the recent um, uh, statistics here uh, that I got uh, from the Public Health Ontario survey in uh, February to December 2020. Um, and, you know, they say that, um, uh, that in Ontario, places of worship accounted for 0.1% of all outbreak associated in hospitalizations. In Ontario, places of worship account for 0%, zero numerically, uh, and like and zero numerically of outbreak as outbreak associated deaths. Hmm. Um, uh, in other numbers, in Ontario, as of June 24 this year, we've had uh, we've got uh, 284 hospital patients out of a population. Uh, what are we? We're we're at a population now of 14.7 million. In Alberta, as of June 19, 214 hospitalizations uh, with 4.4 population. So Alberta, I mean, Ontario is like way uh, in much better position if you want to take those numbers and right. all the rest. But then anyhow, it says here that close to 60% of Canadian COVID deaths related to outbreaks, 99.8% um, of those uh, in long-term care, health care, and correction shelters. So, so then the, the question has been uh, that a lot of people in the religious community are saying, well, look, I mean, the reality is there's not uh, a lot of, um, uh, of sickness that comes as a result of churches yeah, meeting. If you follow the science, <laughs> so, does it make the argument to close the churches down? Yeah, and then some people will say, well, because we closed the churches down, that's, that's why, why the numbers are so right, okay, low. Sure. And so you're getting this, this constant, uh, you know, milieu of, of just what's happening, right? right? Um, and so we, as, as we're going through this experience, I think as time goes on, hopefully as we look back at it, we'll be able to say, okay, so what happened here? What, what is it we can learn from this so that should this, God forbid, but if we have another pandemic, um, how should we be relating to right. it, right? And so there's um, uh, one of the things I've, I've seen, uh, well, let's look at uh, a couple of areas. We got, first of all, the pastors, or there are some pastors, few pastors. Uh, they've been making it in the news, and it seems like uh, uh, news stations love it when uh, they see uh, pastors going, and, uh, and some people have referred to them as the rogue pastor, for example. <laughs> And, and um, but the pastor is saying, look, a part of our understanding of scripture is that we are to, to meet together, right? Which right. is what the apostle Paul talks about. And, um, and so then they're saying, well, look, if you've got such low numbers and there's been no cause of uh, sickness and so forth of our members coming together and worshiping and fellowshipping and, and as human beings, of course, we are a very social uh, being that, that yes. needs to yes. have, uh, there, there, there's a need for us to be uh, social, but there's also a spiritual element where we come together of like mind. We are taking part in uh, communion, which is a communal uh, activity. It's not just something you do by yourself. It's part of, no, exactly. the whole church, as you know, as the pastor, when you do Holy Communion and so forth. And so, and so all of these things are going on. And then the pastors are saying, no, no, no. Look, we, we've allowed um, a year to go by or you know, six months to go by. We see that the, you know, the fear mongering that's been going on, it's not as bad. Yes, it's bad. Yes, people have died. Uh, and you know, I mean, this is real. Yes. Uh, there's no question about it, but these guys, uh, these pastors or some of them are taking the position. No, no, we're not. And then, then, okay, so that you put those off to the side, but then you look at the other part of the church and the church is saying, well, um, no, you know, it, it's part of the Christian witness uh, that we are to follow what Apostle Paul says in Romans 13. Subject ourselves. Subject yeah. ourselves and let's, let's uh, be the witness right. and let's care for our neighbors. Let's make sure that uh, our neighbors are not going to um, have any kind of illness as a result of us coming together for church. Right. And so... You know, here now we what are. Do, yeah. yeah, now I do. And so, what? One of the things I've been seeing is a lot of a lot of debate and discussion going on between church members, um, and uh, judgmental 
attitudes that have developed um, and, and yes. people are uptight. Yes. So yeah, a lot of things have changed. So then how do we deal with this, right? And, and, and that's, that's the struggle we find ourselves. And I tell you, uh, Bill, I have been uh, wrestling with this uh, myself um, in, in the numbers of people who wanting uh, advice as to what they should be doing, how they should be uh, dealing with this. And I can tell you this, I am, uh, I hear both sides and I, I uh, understand where everyone is coming from and, and all the rest. But I do think we have to start asking ourselves some questions. Okay. We have to ask some serious questions in this country uh, when it comes to, uh, as, and you know, and again, it's going to be reflective, right? It's going to be looking back right. as to, you know, what have we done right? What have we done wrong? Right. What can we learn from this sure. experience? And there's something that really, really riled me was when I saw uh, a fence go up around a church in Alberta mm. and then hundreds of police officers go and basically <laughs> create this, well, what would you call it? Blockade a, for, a blockade, yeah, yeah. fortress, whatever. Yeah. I mean, that to me was, uh, that was, that was, uh, that rang with me to say, hey, you know, what are we doing as a society? Can we not come to a much better assessment of dealing with the very opposing views? Right. Right? Both views. Um, and to me, that was, that was a jarring sight. Mm. That was a jarring sight. I've, I've studied uh, a lot of uh, issues with conscientious objection over the years. I've studied um, persecution around the world and all the rest of it. And um, here we have, um, here we have a liberal democracy that's literally putting up a fence around a church that from, and I'm willing to be corrected, but from my understanding, reading in the press and so on, there wasn't one person that died or anything of that nature as a result of these, this church meeting. Now, were they against uh, going against the law? Yes, they were. Should they be subject to the law? Yes, that's the law. So there, is, there are consequences, obviously, okay. when we violate the law. Well, now we have to step back, though, and say, okay, so is this the appropriate way in dealing with people of faith who are not out there vandalizing anything? They're not smashing anything. They're not, they're not shutting down everything. They're just simply having worship. And then they go ahead and they now have to meet uh, secretly. Yeah, clan yeah, yes, in right? secret location. In a yeah. secret location. Yeah. Uh, helicopters, police helicopters are looking for them and trying to find out where they're meeting. I mean, I don't know. There's got to be a different solution to this problem, doesn't there? It? That's my point. Yeah. That is my point. Yeah, I can see. And, um, um, you know, and again, like I say, I see both sides. And, I, and, I, and, I, and some people will say, well, no, there's only one side. But right. <laughs> no, there's, we've, we've got to have, I think, in our society a lot more coming together and yes. say, look, we've got to work out our differences here because this is, this is not the way we can go forward. And what that does, when, when the heavy hand of the police or when the heavy hand of the state is coming down, we're starting to see it, right? Yes. Uh, where people are saying, okay, no, no, enough is enough. And, and that's just, like, we don't want to be there. Right. I mean, this is Canada, after yes. all. This is a place where people come to avoid all of this, yes. right? And you hear that. Yes. And then I hear, okay, well, this is a rogue pastor, right? The, the rogue pastors, they're, they're misleading the flock and all the rest. Well, you know, those are judgment calls that people will make. Um, and uh, history will determine. Yeah, exactly. History will determine exactly, okay, was the pastor on the right side, as it were, uh, with respect to this. But, um, you know, there is no question that we can have sympathies towards the idea that says, hey, look, um, there's a pandemic, government has legislated uh, or passed regulations through their legislation and all the rest. 
then we got to, we got to say, okay, well, we need to follow that, uh, but then how do we how do we deal with it? Now here's, and here's why all of this confusion it gets even more confused. Okay. So we have all of these government regulations. We got these um, uh, pastors who are being fined. We've got um, all of that. By and large, there, there is now uh, at least two court cases that I'm aware of, uh, maybe th three, of pastors uh, that are ongoing. Um, and we'll see how the courts deal with it. But by and large, a number of these various tickets for violations and so forth, as it gets closer to the court, the, um, the government has been withdrawing mm, those charges. So now... So what does that tell yeah, us? Yeah, exactly. You know, it, it, like, so again, more questions are raised, right? So again, there's more confusion. Mm. And um, so is it that government is saying, okay, well, I'm, we're starting to see that there's a lot of pushback going on. This is creating a lot of animosity between the, you know, the, the church members and the, and the government and all the rest. And here's, here's the thing. When it comes to this kind of stuff, uh, we, we have to look back and we have to look at history and we have to say, hey, any time that there's a major uh, confrontation going on in society with respect to um, uh, churches, pastors, and um, government, that kind of thing, um, if... There, there, there are many people in our society right now who look at Christianity and look at the religious community and they say, look, they're the ones that cause all kinds of trouble. They're the ones that... But if, if we were to look at the history of, for example, of uh, rights in Canada, uh, rights in liberal democracies, you'll go back and you'll find that it was the pastors, it was the church leaders in the time just, you know... Um, for us in Canada, it goes back to the whole experience in England right after the Reformation and all the rest. And then we get pastors who are put in jail. Guys rogue like... pastors. Rogue pastors. Yeah. Guys like, uh, like uh, John Bunyan who are, who are there um, preaching on the streets of London and he's saying something that offends the archbishop or something. He's thrown in jail. He writes the beautiful... Um, uh, Pilgrim's Park, Progress, and all the rest of it, it had a dramatic impact on the whole issue of freedom of speech and all the rest of it. And this is, this is the thing. It has been the pastors. There's been those outliers. It's been those right. uh, rogue individuals who... So they break uh, away from the system, right? They, they, well, yeah, they, 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 they just... They challenge it, They right? challenge yeah. the edges, right? Yeah. Um, and um, we may have all kinds of opinions against them, uh, we, all of this, but the reality is those who were the rogues have become the heroes. Right. Um, and so we have to ask ourselves the question, okay, is this being totally unreasonable? Now, of course, there's going to be cases there will be. Right. But, but individuals who are willing to stand up and, and, uh, and say, look, I, there is something wrong with what's going on here. Now, and then at the other side of it, uh, the other uh, side of us would say, well, no, um, the pastor gets what he deserves. And I don't feel one bit worried with the fact that uh, the fence went up and that the police are around the church, right? In fact, uh, there were churches and uh, ministers who said the very same thing about what had happened to the Grace Life Church um, in, in Alberta. But then I asked the question, but what if there's a change in government or there's a new reality or new situation and suddenly fences go up around your church? Right. Um, that be, yes. You know, it's... So, and, and again, you know, there, there's... Um, like, all I'm trying to express here is that this COVID experience has created a lot of tension, yes. has created a situation where we have to step back and we've got to start looking at what has gone on. So now, we're, we, we are hopefully, by God's grace, going to be coming out of it. 
Uh, we don't know what the future holds on this, but we have seen historically where uh, governments have taken power and in this country for states of emergency, um, and they have given power back. Uh, that has been our experience. Right. But what will the future hold? We don't know. What will be the um, the, the struggle as we as we go forward? So, so Bill, there's a lot that's happened, and there, there's more uh, uh, issues, of course, court cases and so forth, with on other issues. But on the COVID issue, I'm just um, I, I think I'm I'm in the in a state of bewilderment. Yeah, I I, I think that's. Uh... I think that would describe my position. I'm not a legal expert by any stretch of the imagination, but I don't think the problem can be resolved by stifling dissenting opinions. And that, to me, has been the most frightening thing. As you said, in, in a democracy, in a, in, a, in a pluralistic society like we have, and I know you have been an advocate of this, you have argued for this, that in the marketplace, every idea has to be entertained. It has every to be. idea has to be heard. Yeah. We don't have to agree with every idea, but we will not come to a proper solution if arbitrarily we say your idea is not even to be heard. Right. It's not even to be considered. That's right. That's right. And to me, that's been the most frightening thing and the most unrecognizable thing about this country. I'd love to have you come back next week because mm -hmm. I'd like to I'd like to hear from you your take on things like, you know, Bill C-10. Because mm -hmm. as a lay person, this is feeding into my anxiety mm -hmm. because as a lay person, I'm hearing, well, the government is working to take away your freedom of speech, your freedom to express yourself, whether it's in social media or others. I don't know enough about it. So if you're sure. willing to come back and talk about this, I think our audience will appreciate that. Mm -hmm. But I think I'm in the same boat. Like, I, this is unrecognizable to me. It, it, it really is unrecognizable. It's not, it's not, um, it's not what we have been, uh, obviously, experienced prior to this crisis. There's yeah. been no crisis like this one. Uh, you know, I, I look at uh, even the whole discussion of the have a vaccine or not right, to have a vaccine. Right. And then uh, people being very upset about it. And then people saying, well, okay, well, why haven't there been other treatments for looking after right. COVID? Right. And why is it everyone's going to the vaccine? Why not? You know, oh, <laughs> it's, just, it's just like, but then no one is allowed to speak. Yes. And uh, so, yeah, it's... I, yeah, I, I've... Uh... I mean, like, again, I'm a lay person. I mean, I just, I see stuff. I see YouTube, you know, taking down people's opinions, you know, Facebook restricting that, you know. <sighs> that scares me, man. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, I, yeah. we, I always thought, yeah, I might be wrong, but I always thought we have always fought for the freedom for you to express. We have some limitations on freedom of speech. There's right? there's no absolute, absolute, yeah, no question. But, about it. you know what I mean? Like, the, our ability, to, can I not express my idea? Like, my idea is not, is not valid. And then when you come forward and express a dissenting idea, we have seen cases where these, what are they, are they called ad hominem attack? Yeah, ad hominem attack is ad, against you personally. Against the person. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, trying to, 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 to cause doubt about the character of that end of, like, can we not discuss the ideas, the, like, the merits of the idea? Here's your opinion, here's my opinion. Yep. This is how Canada is always, that's, this is the Canada I was born into for 59 years. Mm. Mm. And I'm, um, I'm worried, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, uh, and I think it's extremely important for us to recognize what's happened and to be vigilant uh, because our freedom determine, uh, like our freedom is dependent upon our eternal vigilance. We're all out of time, man. Yeah. So you're okay for next week? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so let's do that. Um, let's have a word of prayer. Gracious God, loving Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your love and kindness. Thank you for everything you do for us. Uh, Father, we just pray for wisdom and guidance. 
be with our leaders. Father, we recognize the, the challenges of leadership and the responsibilities and the pressures and, that are placed upon these leaders. And we just pray that you just anoint them, that their leadership will be, will be, will be directed by you, Father. Just bless our nation, bless our country, bless our viewers, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, Dr. Bussey, thank you again for joining us, and we look forward to having you next week. Well, it was great to be here. Thank you. We love, we love having you here. <laughs> Folks, uh, on our website, under the Previous Programs tab, there is a link to Dr. Bussey's blog. There you can sign up for his blog. He's always writing about the intersection of freedoms and religion and law. Very interesting. You can also access some of the publications he's put out, including this two-volume set here called uh, the Inherence of Human Dignity, Foundations of Human Dignity, Volume 1 and Volume 2. Check that out on our l4ltv.com website. Click on the Previous Programs tab. You'll see a button to Dr. Bussey's blog. Check that out. We're so happy that you were with us this week. I want to remind you of uh, our Instagram page. Every morning, 6.30 a.m., we put out a one-minute devotional video. If you'd like to get access to that, follow me on Instagram, Santos underscore Bill. All of our programs are available on our YouTube channel. You can subscribe to that. You can get an audio version of the program on our SoundCloud account. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. Anything else I can't think of, but those are uh, access points where you can be in constant contact with our program and we can stay connected in between broadcasts. So, so uh, check those out. Next week, Dr. Bussey is coming back. We're going to delve into some more of these oh so important uh, legal matters for so many of us living here in Canada. We hope you'll join us. Until then, God bless you. We hope you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you back here again next week.